but unfortunately he had to coast all the way around the racetrack and that has to call him 15 or 20 seconds the time he coasted around so he will be a long ways behind the leaders. And this all shakes out fellas. Sterling Marlin and Davey Allison are going to come out the best on this situation because they're going to be in front of Bill Elliott and Dale Earnhardt who are hooked up in the draft. Not too far behind, but uh, at least they're out of the gap. It's not too far. David Allison is in front of Sterling Marlin at the moment, but there's still some other pit stops to be made. In front of Sterling as he checks the rearview mirror and shifts into gear as he picks up speed. Going Bob, to Bob, Bob, that's not Sterling Marlin. Oh, I'm sorry. Morgan, Morgan Shepard. Thank you. What are you watching? I'm just so excited about this race. He said it. It's going to be an exciting race. That's, that's right. Got you excited. <laughs> There is Mark Martin and Sterling Marlin. Now, who do you see Sterling Marlin in that thing? Isn't that the fifth car there? Well, there's more. There's uh, Mark Martin. You got there's, one right. That's a baby. <laughs> That's Ricky Kyle Rudd and Ricky Kyle Rudd. Rudd. <laughs> That's right. Now, there is Sterling Marlin. Well, he was there on oh, oh, Dave Dave Mark. Oh, you got it. <laughs> okay, way out in front of this group is Sterling Marlin. <laughs> and Davey Allison is leading this race now. Well, maybe we better go make some phone calls here and <laughs> enter the uh, Gillette Halfway Challenge sweepstakes. Call 1-900-436-7000 before the halfway lap. The call will cost you 95 cents. You've got to be 18 years of age or older to win her. Stay tuned to see which driver wins the $10,000 reward. If your entry is selected, you're called at home. You will win a Chevrolet Lumina Z34 if you can name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Challenge. And you can win an instant prize if you have the correct UPC code from a Gillette product. Ricky Rudd, Martin Martin, Kyle Petty all drafted together trying to get back to the front. As you said, Davey Allison is the who came out the best on his pit stops. And I'm telling you, if this stays green flag all day, it is, the pit stop is going to win or lose this race for the drivers and cars. Yes, sir, because one second in the pits can mean the difference of being in the draft and out of it. But if Kyle Petty barely can hang on, or can he hang on? Ricky Rudd had an awfully good pit stop. He is being shown in the fifth position now with Mark Martin there in the sixth. And Rudd was back about 15th before they made this pit stop, so he really made a good stop. There's a gaggle of a dozen cars running side by side. Oh, that looks like Glotzbach and Spencer got together just a little bit. Followed by Rick Mast. They're going by Darrell Walter. Walter just came out of the pits. That's Judy Donnelly's car, that Spitfire Spark Club car. And here is the leader, Davey Allison, Sterling Marlin, and folks, Dale Earnhardt and Bill Elliott have run those that front two some down. They were what? 100 yards back then? Yeah, they were more than that, Ben. They were a little over a second behind them, and so uh, they they have run them down. They teamed up together and pulled right back up there. So there are the four cars that we saw running in the first four position before the pit stop. The only thing different is Davey Allison was fourth before they made the pit stop. Now he's first. As Bob Shack, the Shoney's in car, moves over as the car is lapped by him. Davey with some bad luck last week at Martinsville, finished in 26th position, but still maintaining that points lead by a scant 16 over Harry Gant. So the first round of pit stops have been made, and we now settle down for more green flag racing. It's been three all the way for the first 54 laps of the 188 lap Winston 500. Around the world and through the year, ESPN's award-winning Speed World Auto Racing coverage. This week in Talladega, Alabama for the Winston 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race. And it's Davey Allison, Sterling Marlin, Dale Earnhardt, and Bill Elliott running together the front four. So far, these cars are averaging 190 miles an hour. That's where they pit stop drone is, where they slowed down. Stop for about 15 seconds, change tires, fill the car for fuel, and back on the racetrack. We still average 190 miles per hour. There are the front four now, and we show you the interval between fourth and fifth position. Now there's Ken Schrader. He has been lapped. 
waiting on the fifth place car to come down, and that is Ricky Rudd, and right behind him is Mark Martin. They are pretty far behind that car. Rudd was about to was behind Mark Martin a couple of laps ago, so I guess they're going to pass each other back and forth, trying to figure out which combination is faster. How can we get to the front? How can we catch these guys? If Rudd is a little bit quicker in front than Mark Martin, that's how they run. And it might uh, also be vented that that uh, they're doing that to help cool. Maybe the uh, if one of them gets. Uh, they might be overheating. Yeah. That's right. They're talking about Sterling yeah. Marlin. His is overheating. We see Sterling Marlin about following that 28 car. There's no air to go through that grill. So you've got to get the air through the grill, through the radio to see these engines are. Here's seventh and eighth. Kyle Petty and our pole setter, Ernie Irvin. Now, Petty had lost the draft for Mark Martin and Ricky Rudd a while back, so he had dropped back, and Ernie Irvin had come out of a pack of cars back there and caught him so they can maybe hook up together. Now Irvin is going to try to pass him and say, hey, I'm running faster. And Kyle realizes that. He won't fight him. He'll say, I just hope I can hang on to him. I think he will be able to. Because just these two cars, Ernie doesn't have anyone in front of him to get the draft on to help him, so Kyle will pull up on his back, but now they'll run together. Seventh and eighth position, Ernie Irvin and Kyle Petty. Irvin, of course, eligible for the Unical bonus money, mounting to, uh, mounting today to twenty-two thousand eight hundred dollars. He can win the race. That's the bonus he picks up for the Unical Corporation. If he doesn't win the race, no one else will get the money. Got another seventy-six hundred dollars. We'll go on to Charlotte. God, there's still 30 cars in the loop lap. Pretty amazing and an incredible pace that's being set with no cautions to this point. I think that's the key, the fact that we haven't had a caution and still have that many cars in the lead lap. While we're kind of settled down here and watching the uh, action, we welcome a new race fan into the world today. Our normal producer for NASCAR Winston Cup telecast, Neil Goldberg, left on Friday after coming down here preparing to do the show, but wife Laura was ready to give birth to Zachary Alexander who came into the world on Friday night nine pounds five ounces and uh, we wish Neil and Laura the best also Zachary and Zachary that's for sure and brother John yeah the whole family <laughs> there's Jimmy Spencer and right behind him is Rusty Wallace and then Michael Waltrip Spencer leading this group. Jimmy Spencer right now is 11th spot, 10th spot. 11th. <laughs> Rusty wants to get in front. If he, they'll follow Spencer for a lap or two and see who's faster, and then they need to work together. The crews need to work together to keep these cars running as fast as possible because I'm telling you, they got Davey Allison, Sterling Marlin, Earnhardt, and Bill Elliott up there. They are running some blistering laps. Yes, so. they are. They're running a good bit faster than Ernie Irvin qualified. For example, Irvin was about uh, 49, 60 something in seconds around this racetrack. Right now, Davey Allison and that front group are running about 49, 30, so three tenths of a second faster than Ernie qualified. Rick Mast in car number one finds himself in 14th spot. Old Flipper, remember last year in the Talladega 500, the race here in August, yep. flipped over and slid down the front trailer on his roof. Yep. They said he looked like a mole crawling out of that car. <laughs> he was laying on his roof. He had to dig some dirt out to get out of That is Stanley Smith right behind him. Stanley was another one of those guys who had uh, disqualification of his first qualifying run. They found some uh, what they determined as illegal fuel, and so he was uh, disqualified and qualified on the second day. And I think it was fuel that was not, it was not a popped up type of a fuel. It was not an additive. They had been down here testing last week. Michael Walker seems yeah. to be off the pace there, sure guys. Him Paul Pontiac. Just, just more than out of the draft. Yeah. It looks like Michael Walker's problems are continuing, so he is definitely off the pace. But anyway, they were down here testing last week, a group of cars, and uh, they, the Unical pumps, they've changed things around here in the infield at Talladega, and the pumps were not working to, to get Unical gas. They went across the track to the Talladega Super Speedway, got some Cam 2 gas just to finish their test. Well, they didn't take that out of the car, so the 
the uh, Stanley Smith group said, and uh, it was still in there, but it was not the Unical gas that they're supposed to have. So Michael Waltrip relinquishes 12th place as he 